Welcome to Call Us Mommy Podcast, where we get real about mom life, relationships, and careers. I'm Tiana, a single mom of three. And I'm Marielle, a married mom of four. We're both on a mission to empower you not to settle in any area of life. Hey, it's just me today on Call Us Mommy Podcast, but I have a special guest, my favorite ever, my husband, Zared Myers. It's me. I'm here. You're here. You're happy. <laughs> we got you on. Okay, so we're going to be talking just about marriage and life in Love. general. Yes, and we thought that we could talk about things that we wish we would have known getting married at 21 after being high school sweethearts and situationships and yes, all the, other. the young us. <laughs> the young us. So instead of coming up with our own advice... We thought we would go through some of the main things that people usually tell people getting married and make it better. Or worse. Make the advice better or worse, yeah. Maybe don't take some of our advice, but have fun listening either way. This is coming from a, like a BuzzFeed article. So it's like real people that have submitted this. Probably not been married as long as us. This person's been married for 25 years. Okay, well, the first one's always. <laughs> we, we, okay, right. so for the record, we've been married for 10 years. We have four kids. If you're new, and yeah. we've been together Ten since half year, 2009. Okay, so the first piece of advice is recognize that you're both going to change over time and enjoy that journey together. What do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, sure. I feel. <laughs> what? Well, I feel like if you didn't, know, you know, that's good new new advice. Yeah. Yeah, you'll change. People change. That's good. Yeah. I guess we all need to be reminded of that too. Yeah, yeah. I think so. I think you do need to remember that. No, that's true. I'm just so <laughs> jaded now. Listen Why? to me as an old married man. <laughs> an old married man turning no, 33 no, on just, March 3rd. Oh, uh, platinum birthday. Mm-hmm. No, I mean that makes sense. Yeah, that's Why? a good one. I a think, plus. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so I will dissect it a little more. I think that it's important to remember because the days, I think you feel you get trapped in the days. You know, the days feel really long and the weeks feel really short. And that gets even more true once you have kids. And especially like as a mother, you do change a lot. I think you change probably more than the man and maybe like more quickly. And I didn't recognize, recognize all the changes that were happening to me until like it was like whiplash and then it was like an aftershock of oh my gosh like who even am I anymore so I think just communicating that with your spouse and being a support person throughout that I think that. it's like we were talking about too where we change without knowing it that it's happening yeah when we're in it you know like when they kill the frogs in science class oh that's so horrible no like you know when they blow yeah them. No, they put like some sort of you've seen ET. Oh, I think they probably feel that. Well, they don't because you do it real slow. I don't think that's (laughs) no, that's a thing. Yeah, put in the comments. Nobody fact check that. They do. If there's an animal you kill by blowing them slow, a lobster. That's a horrible way to compare marriage. (laughs) Well, hey, there's all different types of marriages out there. We're not off to a good start, guys. No, I just, it, you don't notice the changes. And then you look back and you're like, oh, remember when we did that? And you're like, oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, but as, and you don't realize it at the time, but you've just changed so much as a couple. Mm, I think this is coming from someone super, super stubborn, thinking that they were like already so perfect no, and they didn't need babe. to change. <laughs> no. Because I think just that. Just that we have changed. Mm-hmm. Like, we didn't, like, I didn't realize that I was changing. While it was happening. Yeah. Yeah. Like while things were shifting in our marriage and as we were settling in and when we moved from our apartment to our house and Mm -hmm. just different things that we just, traditions that we came up with and just kind of made on our own. Just that, and then we looked back. You just blacked out the whole time and then woke up one day and was like, oh yeah. Yeah, babe, I blacked out the whole time. (laughs) (laughs) But you don't realize it at the time, I don't think. Like you don't feel like every day you're changing. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I don't think it's like a day to day thing. Like getting a tan. <laughs> oh my god. Is gosh. that a better analogy? No. <laughs> okay. Okay, one thing I'll that one. you should know about Zared is he's really, really bad at analogies. <laughs> really good at analogies. He's really bad at them. <laughs> so good at them. And he would always, he still does, but 
like dating, he'd always be like, oh my gosh, your skin is so soft. Your skin is like, and then he would pick the most ridiculous no. things. Like, I can't even think of like how ridiculous they were. Like, it would be like a, a spider's web or something. Like, the, I never said a spider's you web. You probably did. Like, the, just a slug. A, a slug. Said, You're as soft as silk. a slug. No, as soft I as never a said as a slug. <laughs> I probably said soft as silk. Oh yeah, like I'm sure you didn't. You freshly didn't woven. <laughs> Spider no, silk. there was one. You've used one before that was like completely off base, but whatever. Something coming out of the microwave. Yes, you did. I think you were like butter straight out of the microwave. But if it's right out, then it's warm, and you know but who's that it's immersing soft. themselves in warm microwave butter. Would be delicious. <laughs> Okay, let's move on because uh, I think the people are, edit, edit are ready. That out, man. Yeah. Edit that. Okay, so the second piece of advice that was submitted this person's been married eight years and they said the best thing you can do what is communicate know. early in the relationship. I wouldn't communicate my feelings because as a man, it made me feel weak. This almost ruined it all together. I opened up more over time and I've gotten to the point where I'm the one who keeps the conversation going if I feel like my wife is holding back. So I feel like this is something that everyone says, and I've probably been guilty of saying it in podcast episodes where like just a piece of advice is to communicate which I feel like is really bad advice because everyone knows that they need to communicate the problem is not everyone knows how to communicate and how to do it effectively yeah I think that takes more practice than I thought it did yeah just because I thought yeah I know what words are you know I can, yeah I've got it well there's so many pieces to effective communication I think there's you know self-awareness there's empathy there's being able to self-regulate while you're communicating, especially if it's like a heated conversation or you're being triggered at all and not just like, oh, what do you want for dinner? Yeah, I hate that question too. Yeah, you also struggle with that. That's one of my daily struggles weekly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, but I do think it's important to learn how to communicate best with the person that you are communicating with the most. Yeah. It takes more effort than in initially, you know, or maybe all the time. How do you think that we've way. changed our communication since we first got married to now? I think we know each other's rhythms and flows throughout mm -hmm. the day. Yeah. You know, like when to do certain things and like when each other need to rest. Mm -hmm. Kind of like, I know that that's a big thing I've seen on, you know, the socials right now to like, before you dump on a friend, like to ask, like, hey, are you mentally okay with me, like venting for a minute or, which, I mean, I would never do that to you, but <laughs> I would just do it. <laughs> but I think I do like kind of gauge where you are. Like if you come home stressed, I'm not going to like immediately unload on you or. Well, it's easy because I'm never stressed. But... That's literally not true, but. <laughs> that is something, the growth for me, change for me. I never used to be stressed. But I stressed you out so much that now you are. That's what it is. Ten years of marriage will do it to you. No. It's hard you are. <laughs> edit that out, babe. Okay. No, just that I do. We don't I, do edits on this podcast. I have had different stressors mm -hmm. in my life built. And just that I didn't know. And it's like a healthy, get whatever, you know. Blah, blah. But I just didn't really consider myself one to be stressed mm -hmm. or have stress in my life past a certain point. Like after I get off work or after I'm done with whatever it is. But then I think as I just got older, inevitably more things yeah, like four entered kids. my life. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I think the kids will do that. But even just work and just, you know, my job getting more different, just different jobs, just things well, pile up and then there's Yeah, we didn't have stress. a gradual pile up. We had a, oh, we were dating and we're in college and then now we're married with a child. And we're still finishing up college, but you have a full-time job. And so it kind of all just like happened at once. And, and the kids just kept coming. They did. Don't know how that happened. Just kept, kept People kept asking kids. us if we knew. Oh, I hate that. It's my favorite quote. <laughs> Don't you know how babies are made. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, I you think. You figure that out? <laughs> I think instead of searching for like a magical answer for how to communicate like, again, it's being patient with each other and having grace, especially in the beginning and navigating everything together, but also like yourself. Like one of the things I want to bring up is like the expectations that you set, not for yourself, but for your partner. Like I would set these expectations for Zara that 
sometimes he was aware of and then a lot of times he wasn't. And so I would, it was very easy for me to get angry at something that he had no idea how to prevent and, or it was unfair to have these expectations for him that he wasn't on board with. Like, you don't know what you don't know. Until you, until you do. Know, yeah. Until you know it. Yeah. So, you know, you can't, you make the choice to marry someone and so you have to keep, you have to keep choosing them even if they aren't fitting the bill that you thought they would fit or, um, you know, they aren't fitting into this mold that you expect them to be in. Now, obviously, if this is, these are like conversations you've had before you got married and then it's changing like after, that's a completely different thing. But I think that one of the things I struggled with the most was just loving all of Zared, like even his imperfections and hyper-focusing on them. Like it's like the classic, like if you are in church at all, like going to church and hearing a sermon but then thinking, oh, this is for that person or this is for the person sitting next to me. No, definitely not me. Instead, <laughs> instead of it being for, for you. And that was my biggest issue. So once I started becoming more focused on being self-aware, it still bothered, like there's still stuff that bothered me, but like I would just focus on myself and like what I could control. Okay, the next piece of advice from someone married for 25 years is support them in public and argue in private. Yes. <laughs> no, I mean, I think of, I mean, obviously I think that's true too mm. in public settings with whoever, but I think that's true with the kids. I feel like that's the main, yeah. I mean, the kids come to mind more than anything else. But I, th I think, yeah. I, I think that it's healthy for the kids to see some arguments though, because I think it's good for them to see it yeah, resolve as well. But I think it goes past just um, arguing. I think it goes, uh, it goes into like supporting each other in public too like even if you might go home and then argue about why that situation even happened so like I think a good example would be um you know whenever you get married you're not just merging two people you're merging two lives like two you know childhoods two families two normals and I think that's one thing a lot of people don't realize is like you are normal it's not everybody else's normal so that something as simple as like how you store your silverware and then something as big as like how you spend your Christmas days. And that was something that was hard for us at the beginning. I think it's probably every married couple, especially if you didn't like live together beforehand or experience this beforehand. Again, we got like a fire hose of all that at once. But just learning how to separate ourselves from our family and live our own life instead of just like letting our family kind of dictate those things. Not that either one of our families were super overbearing or anything, but it's just like easy to naturally navigate to one or the other. And I think one thing that helped us a lot is that when we moved two hours away, so it was like we were kind of immediately out of that situation. But then around holidays, we would just default to doing whatever our families were doing. And the first two years, that was really hard to like get up early, do oh, Christmas, gosh. drive two hours away, go to like, several Christmases and we just realized like we are not enjoying this long term our kids are not going to enjoy this um and I know that's hard for some people because sometimes both partners are not on the same side of that like whether they don't want to like set boundaries with their families or they don't want to um you know make people upset or whatever but it's a long-winded answer to say like I think if you're in that situation and one partner is saying like, I, we are no longer going to do this or like, we're no longer going to have Christmases at your house. Like we're going to have them. You're welcome to come, but like, we're not going to be traveling on Christmas day in front of the family member. Like the other person, if they disagree, shouldn't be like, no, like, I don't think we should do that. We should still come to my mom's house or whatever. Like go home and have that conversation. Yeah. Communicate beforehand. Yeah. I think just, like, keep it in your own bubble, you know? Like, don't let outside people come into, like, making those decisions for you or, or yeah. na like, helping navigate. Although this is a therapist. You should definitely do that. But. <laughs> Listen to your therapist. Like, don't let, don't let your partner call their mother and, and bring them into a conversation. Yeah, and I think that it is easy, like you said, to just default to what you've done before. Yeah. But I think it's better when you can come up with your own things to do. And. I'm still thinking about Christmas. <laughs> but supporting each other, mm -hmm. too, though, just in whatever you're talking about, whatever yeah. you're going through. I mean, sometimes I'll even, 
wonder or not even know. And I'm still just like, yeah, whatever she says. <laughs> but in like a helpful way, not yeah. a, just because I support you. Yeah. Yeah. And I think like when we got married, and I'm sure this happens for a lot of people, but again, I think it's because of the timing of everything. I was, you know, pushed into motherhood and being, you know, married all at once. And so I had a lot of self selfishness that had to immediately be washed out because I became a mother. And so like that was more natural for me. And I think for you, it took a little bit to like let go of like, oh, I can't just go do whatever I want whenever I want. Not that you did all the time, but like I feel like I felt very alone because I naturally had no desire to go anywhere because I was like stuck at home with a child. But you didn't feel that as much because naturally your body wasn't responding that way. And so that created a lot of resentment from me, but just not communicating well enough and then you not being really ready, I think, to receive it. Yes, I remember that time in our lives. The dark time. <laughs> I wouldn't say it's the dark time. No, but I think it, I just didn't, I didn't prioritize you enough then. And I think that was kind of one of the big changes, of course, because everyone always says that, like, oh, yeah, mm -hmm. prioritize your partner and happy wife, happy life. Yeah. And all these little cute, trite things people say. Yeah. But to actually focus on making you and our family a priority in my everyday. And more than just like being home, even or just being here, but yeah, because you could be home and still be yeah the opposite any, of helpful yeah. yeah. So then it was it was like not that you no, I'm not saying you did. I'm uh, saying yeah. in general, a person could be home. Yes, yeah. <laughs> but it was hard because you know, and then I realized it was more than just than just being there or being present, mm -hmm. but contributing. And yeah. And actively trying to prioritize what was important to you mm -hmm. and to us. But I mean, really, at that time, it was more the family, which you were thinking about. And I was just, I think I was still kind of on my own path mm -hmm. then. So actively focusing on making our a priority, however you needed that to happen, was important to do. So then once I finally did that, it just kind of kept going more and more. Mm -hmm. And then I realized that you were doing more and more than what I had thought and then it just kind of keeps going mm -hmm. and then you I realize you know everything is like this we are together in everything that we do mm -hmm. not just keeping track of one thing like yeah. the grocery list or whatever it is which I still love how much we do that together <laughs> <laughs> yeah but just knowing that everything was like you know everything is ours now our whole mm -hmm. life we're united on this mm -hmm. team front yeah yeah, I definitely took more so than just like making it work with you and me. Yeah, like our schedule. Not we're not roommates. Right. Yeah. Like everything is together. Which I don't think we were ever roommates, but it was. I think there was just a time where it was like, it felt like, too, like we weren't gelled together as much, yeah. and it's just interesting because we you were know, like you, operating independently. Yes. But together. Yeah, like oh, it's like oh yeah, that's my husband, but, yeah. like. I don't know. Like an analogy, let me do. We were oh like God! Two, <laughs> we were like two years, <laughs> but now we are one. Okay. But I think it's cool because, because we're still force. our own individual gears. Yeah, but with the our force own, is greater yeah, because of the inertia and like our own hobbies. But somehow we still do them together. Like I, I don't know, like how that's possible. But like we're still. I mean, I think I think what it was is like. You have always been my best friend, but I think the last five years, it's been solidified in a way that's never been before. Like, you're like, okay, if you, if you watch Grey's Anatomy, like you are my person. And there was a time where I had, I felt like a person, but it was always like a girl friend that I'd had that like, I could really share and they would just get me. And not that you always get me, but like, I feel like I can always share and you validate it. You know what I mean? And I feel like you became my person, you know, like not just my best friend, like, oh yeah, you marry your best friend, but like I married my best friend and then that best friend turned into my person. I have no desire to like, like if all the people in the world are like, I hate you, I don't want to ever be friends with you again, I, I would cry because I'm a people pleaser, but I would be fine. And that's what I tell myself too. Like anytime I think about like what other people think of me or my 
performance in my role or whatever, I'm always like, it literally doesn't matter because my person loves me. Mm-hmm. So and I, do. I think it, it, but it took time to get to that point, which people, you know, I was thinking about this and I want to ask, we have friends that lived with, lived with each other and like did life together for a few years before they actually got married. And I want to have this conversation with her, but I just wonder how much that affects you in your actual marriage. Cause like, there's not really a whole lot of change that happens because you've already been doing all of that. You just now have like a marriage license and you can change your name if you want to and all of that. But they've had all that practice. And so, you know what I mean? Like we didn't have that. Like we literally went from. Yeah. But I, mean, I think a lot of that stuff will come out too when, when people have kids. Right? Yeah. Well, yes. I think that changes on a different level. Because you have to decide, level. you know, on what Yeah. People but you're already practiced at doing things as a part. Oh my God. <laughs> Which okay. one's going to be We're going to move on before this year. turns into like a, a Mr. Robot thing. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so this advice, some of these are, are like a little, but okay, next one, I, this person's been married for 10 years, so they should be, you know. On par. Yeah. <laughs> they said, I try to make a point to ask her about her day, talk things out calmly, and pay attention to what she wants slash needs. I keep a list of things I catch. Being able to listen to your partner and do something to make their day slash hour slash minute is something that really makes people cherish each other. So that's a lot of things at once, but... I think that's kind of what I was talking about, like just becoming each other's person and not being roommates. And the list is good. I should probably make a list. Yeah, yeah. You it took you what like years to get my Starbucks order right. Well, you changed it many times. Everyone <laughs> should have a list, but no, that is because you would think that you know a person, <laughs> <laughs> and then they change, home, and then they just <laughs> switch their Starbucks order on, and you're like, who the hell? No, you just, you forget like small little different things or maybe just whatever you, forget. there's just too many things to yeah. remember. You can't I don't remember. like coconut. Yes. And I, <laughs> yeah, I, I know there's a thing there, but there's so many things. So mm. the lists are good. And just to remember yeah. those because it's very thoughtful mm-hmm. and you're always more thoughtful than I am. You're better at that. Mm-hmm. Then I forget all the little things. I think those are really important. It took me a while to pick up on that, clearly. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Still working on it. The next one is we've loved each other and we've hated each other, but I can honestly say that I've never loved him more than I do now. We love spending time together and we've taken a childless vacation once a year for the past 10 years, which helps us reconnect. So our secret is quality time together and a lot of forgiveness. That person's been married 23 years. I can honestly say that I've never hated you. Like, we've been in situations where... Um, yeah, you've probably had more excuses to take me. <laughs> I've never but had I you, never babe. have. I mean, I've been very angry at you, and I've, I've, I'm yeah. sure I've said I hate you to you. I know I, I know I have, which is wrong. But I, I've never actively... Like, I could never walk away and hold and hate be the primary thing in my heart. Yeah, I don't, I don't think... I've ne- I mean, I've never felt hate towards you. Uh, guy, if you would have told me that you had, I think I would have crumbled up and just died right now. I would not be able to handle that. No, I don't think that's just, that's never been a, an emo- hate. Emo- mm-hmm. You know, I always remember just how lucky I am to have you and just to be in a genuine partnership and a, a, a true, what a, a true marriage. Mm-hmm. But I feel like now I just, I've never, I, I also feel... Um, that you've never hated me. <laughs> Does that help? <laughs> Which is important. That helps me a lot. But, it, you know, it, it does, and I, I'm so thankful for that. So then I just, it's hard. Why, how could I have those feelings, mm-hmm. you know, towards someone who's, but that's just a part of it. Mm-hmm. But that's a big part of it, too. Yeah. Well, and we also, we do take childless vacations. I think the only vacations we usually take right now are childless. Gosh, no. And we don't take children with us on vacation. But, but I, I feel like we reconnect more than just when we're on vacation. Well, we, we're camping a lot, which some would say we make it. That's every camping but trip I'm saying me and you. Oh, yeah. I feel like we take time. We try to take time at least once a day to reconnect or connect in some way. Yeah, and the date nights are really hard. I think that would be my mm-hmm. piece of advice to my younger self. Like yesterday's self? <laughs> I think I just always imagined that I would be so romantic. Mm-hmm. Like I would be this 
Like you like taking me on hot air balloon rides at six AM yes. in the morning before prom. <laughs> yes. Like I would just always do those things. Like this will just be easy my whole life to do these super extravagant romantic things mm-hmm. and really self remember when I used to do post it like scavenger hunts? I did that. I mean, I, mean, I did that a few <laughs> more times than you, <laughs> you did. did. I did no, I mean, scavenger hunts. Yes, I did. No, you did. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I put post its all over our apartment. Okay. You'd be finding them for days in cabinets. Oh, yeah, because you were so good at scavenger hunts. But they, it would be just for more posters. Your scavenger hunt would be like, I'm in a dark place with clothes hanging up. But if you turn on the light, you'll be able to see me. I'm also very small and I'm a closet. Can you find me? <laughs> Those were not my My scavenger hunts were great. They yeah. rhymed. No, you're remembering my scavenger hunts. Either way, I did them mm. also. I did several yeah. of them. I just remind myself that this is the season that we're in and we'll get pockets of that and it and during those pockets I remind myself like okay this is what it's going to be like maybe not all the time but a lot more when the kids are like more independent and or especially moved out you know like where we have that season coming and so I'm not going to mourn the season that we're in just because I'm not getting that all the time like also, our motorcycle rides what I would tell oh yeah so motorcycle rides mm-hmm. I do love our motorcycle rides. Yeah. A hobby that we found we enjoy together. Mm -hmm. And Star Wars. Okay, this person didn't even give advice. They just bragged on their 40 years of marriage. But they said, we aren't jealous. So I think that takes care of a lot of the problems. (laughs) And then they said, we know when to let things slide and when to complain. Those sound like complainers. (laughs) That sounds like someone forced them to submit something. They were just like, I don't want anyone else to succeed in marriage. We're just superior. They're also jealous of everyone else's comments. Yeah. No, I think that, but I think that that's good is to like pick your battles. And I, I mean, that's really hard at the beginning whenever you are a really frustrated new mom with a husband that like maybe doesn't yeah, get it I mean, yet. I guess I like pick your battles. Well, I know I needed to. Like, I think I would pile things on you and then you would feel very overwhelmed and like hated, basically. Yeah, but I still think just communicating is just better guys we're just gonna edit this whole thing and it's just gonna be you need to communicate you need to just communicate <laughs> i just think you like picking your battles thing i mean that then they'll always be there like the you know what i mean yeah if you constantly dodge that thing it's always going to be there right, but, as a thing that but you've not to like on. completely i for you maybe that works but like whenever you're a new mom and you're like home all day with your kid your new baby or whatever and yeah. then your husband's working, you know. Yeah, well, you're building this up quite a bit now. My options yeah, are becoming but, more and more limited. But you're having, and you're pregnant, <laughs> also. Just think, like you come home, you've had a whole day at work. I don't know about. Yeah. I know you have whatever, but <laughs> I've only experienced my frustration. So you get home, yeah. you want to change your clothes immediately. You don't take the baby. Okay, that's number one. Like I'm already really oh, that's frustrated. I'm covering grease and oil at the time. Yeah, but I'm really frustrated. Then I know I have to go make dinner. And then, like, you know, you sit on the couch and rest or whatever. It's just, like, pile and pile and pile. And so then at the end of the night, there's something that happens that sets you off. And so you don't just talk about that thing that sets you off. You you talk about all the things that have ever happened during that day that ends up turning into everything that's ever happened in your marriage or your relationship. You know, and that's what I would do is I would – I think I already had so much resentment towards you because of, like, our past before we got married – And that was never resolved. And then all the other things. So, like, every time I would pick a fight or a fight would happen, it would be fueled by all this, like, past unresolved things. Yeah. Guns blazing. And I don't think they ever really got fully healed until we, I mean, talked a lot about them. Yeah, I think that's until we communicated. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) Okay. But in the vulnerability, someone said that earlier. But that's a big thing, too, I feel like, for me. Oh, yeah, you because you were never, I mean, you would never share. I remember in high school, like, begging you to, like, share anything with me, and you were just like, I don't even remember. Like, what a good... I'm a Jedi. Yeah, literally, I was going to say something about Star Wars. Like, you just didn't, you you didn't get it. Like, you were like, I do share. Like, I tell you things. Like, what do you want to know? What You want to know my favorite color is? And I'm like, no, I don't want to, I want to know your soul. I want to know the yeah. secrets of your soul, and you just didn't get that. No, and I mean, I just think it's hard because I, I don't know if it's a guy thing or what it is, but I just never really did that with friends. Yeah. Like, I felt like I had really good friends, and I still do, but we just, (laughs) 
we just never i mean we like we would have deep conversations we would maybe it was just the way that we talked about it with each other Mm -hmm. or like both from the same perspective maybe that's what it was or i don't know i don't know what it is i mean i yeah i think it's a personality thing but i I, at least from where we're the area we're from i think it is a guy girl thing like yeah and probably just didn't share the same things i think that's part of it too i can say it's like i just haven't shared other things the conversations are different yeah you know? maybe just you're vulnerable with different things with different people maybe yeah. that's what it is and i felt like i had been vulnerable in other parts of my life mm-hmm. and then not in and the i think you're also you wanted to know about or whatever you were also was, you someone know? who like if you shared it with anyone ever then you got it out you didn't need to share it with anybody ever again whereas yeah, i'm like true. Oh, we're just meeting. Let me tell you everything about me and my yeah. faults and my See, that strengths. And... To me. I'm just like, oh, I don't want to do all that. Yeah, I know. I know you are. Okay, I don't understand this one, but they've been married 19 years, so there's got to be something good from it. But they, and it might just be the wording. It said, except that no matter how long you've been together, you are not the same person in parentheses, meaning you are not one single person. I feel like that's. Obvious, you will have different interests. Trips alone are okay. Give each other space. These people, that sounds sad. I get, I I guess I get what they're saying. I think I just, the. Does that say trips alone are okay? Yeah, yeah. Like how how long are the trips? Why is that that important to like put in your advice? Solo trips. Yeah. Just so you know, solo trips are okay. Take trips alone. But I guess. That sounds unhealthy. I get, I get all of it except for the you are not the same person, meaning you are not one single person because. Yeah, obviously. Well, Unless like, he's talking to like, like you grow and change. You yeah, know, like a tree. I don't know. I don't get that part, but I do get the like the have different interests. I think that's important because what you you know you got to keep being yourself and like grow as a person. And I think that also helps you get to know each other better, like throughout your growth. Like if you never grow or change or you you know what I mean, like stay interesting. Yeah, and you're still two different people <laughs> so god this person made it really weird but we didn't like somehow combine ourselves yeah, but i mean you are two different people so like anything else i mean you're gonna do different things yeah I mean, you're not gonna like it's fun to both learn this like a different language together yeah. or but you're not gonna i mean i think you'll grow in different ways you'll have yeah different like even the things that we have like the hobbies and the interests that we have that are the same. If like, you were in a band, you wouldn't play the same like, <laughs> instrument. <laughs> at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> I'll Echo. take the top of the guitar, you take the bottom. Uh, yeah. Oh, I like the video. Yeah. What video? Never mind. There's a video. <laughs> Maybe you've seen it. You've seen I've the video. Seen it. Where the five people play the guitar at the same time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've not seen it. And this. they're knocking on it and stuff. You've seen it. But like my like some of the interests that we Go have, TA. like motorcycle riding yeah i don't know why i said it like that <laughs> i could never pronounce that not word automobiles word. <laughs> motorcycles what did, what did the girls say on a motorbike ride yeah motorbikes <laughs> motorbike but like that the level of interest on both of our parts is very different obviously like you're way yes, more interested i have leathers yeah and i'm like let's go on a 20 minute loop around yeah the area yeah and i'm, I'm good yeah. So, but I used to drive to and from Evansville, mm-hmm. just on sixty nine the whole time. Right, fast. I mean, loved it. Yeah. So and I you don't like wind. Well, I mean, it's fine. I'm getting. I'm getting there. It's See, fine. I made a list of things. Don't worry. Yeah. Wind, put it on there. <laughs> wind. That's the only one wind. you ever remember. Coconut yeah. winds and coconut. Okay. Coconut we'll winds. see if you remember that the next time we go anywhere and it has coconut drinks. <laughs> She'll take that one. Okay, the next one, they've been married for 33 years, and they said pick and choose your battles, compromise, and communicate. So I think we covered that pretty well. Yeah, and, they, yeah. did, they nailed that. Okay, the next one, um, married 23 years, separate duvets on the same beds. I can wrap myself up all nice and snug and be warm, and she likes to move around and have fresh air. <laughs> what does that mean? It's the only piece of advice this person has to give. I hope these people duvets. never listen to this. <laughs> I'm sure they won't. Oh, okay, well we don't. Yes, separate duvets. <laughs> we don't do that, but no. Although, I mean, it maybe, wouldn't be a bad idea. Maybe we should <laughs> look at. <laughs> Wait a minute! I'm gonna go tonight. We're gonna try this. This could be the key to marriage. 
I will definitely have multiple sheets because oh, you gotta have lots of sheets. You gotta have. <laughs> he like just I'm dirty them <laughs> sheets. Oh my god. He gets like this is okay, so gross. First of he all, gets very me, oily on, right at now. night. And I so, am like, extremely <laughs> youthful looking. If you were to see me, you would think he is definitely a young man. Oh this is god. a god. Every time I tell someone I got four kids, they four kids. <laughs> And they're just it's baffled. They're you baffled work, he by works it. At a, he manages it's a bank. It's because I'm so young looking. And the people my coming oily, in are very old. My oily, youthful skin. Yeah. Anyway. Um, so we'll literally like, Order yeah, I'm not going to, you guys, if you know, you know. You got a lot of shoes. Yeah. Okay. The next one, married for 17 years. We live by the idea each for the other and two <laughs> against the world. What? That sounded like a passage. Can you go back? I'm sorry, take it from verse two. <laughs> we live by the idea. Okay, this, now this is the idea. That, this is the idea. Each for the other, <laughs> each for the other, and two against the world. <laughs> no, go ahead. Go ahead, we'll make it. Go ahead. Bro. What do you think about One that? One bird in the hand, two in the bush. That's good. I think it's very yeah, similar to the, what we said earlier, but we Two just fish not, in as, a barrel. not as poetic. Yeah, it's the same. It's the same. Communicate. Yeah, I like that. All That's right. That's a good one. The, this one's been married for 22 years, and it says, be best friends first and foremost. Oh, you can't always. We spend time doing things together, right. and we spend time doing things individually. Also, I get along with her <clears throat> parents, and she gets along with mine. That's a weird thing to just add. Also, both of us have blue cars. <laughs> um, yeah, I and mean, I think we said that we said that as well. Be be best friends first and foremost. And I think that's true too, because even in the things that, like you said, like you can't always like focus on that. Like sometimes you have to like wake up on Saturday mornings and take everybody to their multiple kids sports things, and yes. you can't like karate. But I, I feel like it. I feel like you can have. There's ways to, like, in that communication, do it in a way that's communicating with your friend and not this person that you're directing around. You know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah. Like, just prior, I think, again, that's like prioritizing each other, even in the midst of another priority. Yeah, and I think. That... Unscramble that riddle. <laughs> Riddler. <laughs> no, but I think that's true because sometimes when you ask me certain things, mm -hmm. like the way you ask it, this totally changes how I answer it. <laughs> what does that mean? You know, like, or if you remind me of something, and I genuinely probably needed the reminder because I always forget things. Yeah. But if you remind me in a way, and this makes me sound like such a douche. <laughs> like a sexual way. No. Oh. <laughs> All right. I thought that's where you were going. Well, if that's usually let's the, take it downtown. That's usually the direction you take. Downstairs. It. No, back door. Okay. No, like, if you just remind me of something in a way that's, like, that you would remind, like, an employee, you know, like. Yeah, yes, I get do that. Do that. Today, it's, today's Wednesday, you know, or whatever. Yeah. But then if you were to do it in, like, a cute, sexy way. Yeah, so I knew me, that's the direction you were no, going. No, that's, I said that because you said what you said. Okay, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, if you just remind me in, like, a different way, just like, hey, pal. <laughs> when have I ever. <laughs> Never is the Hey, answer. buddy. <laughs> Don't forget, buddy. Today, we're taking you. No, I don't. You know what I mean. It's not all sexual. <laughs> it's mostly sexual. No, you know what I'm saying. All right. The next one's been married for 11 years. This one's about money. So it says, we talk about money on a very, in all caps, regular, probably weekly basis. Okay. Um, yeah. Then they go into that a little bit <clears throat> more. But, you know, Mr. Banker has a lot to say about that. Well... Aside from anything banking, I think when we first got married, remember, I was all about separate accounts, mm -hmm. which now as a banker, that's quite silly. But um, <clears throat> looking back, I just, that's the way I wanted to do things because we'd both been. Which was ironic because I paid for everything. So I don't know <laughs> what was in your account that you wanted to keep from me. That's not true. That's not all true. <laughs> oh, was okay. Which you, let's get the bank statements. But I, I think once you like again when you when I realized everything was a 
team sport. <laughs> like when we were really together on stuff, that's true financially. Like mm -hmm. we weren't truly financially independent, I don't feel like, until we were married. Mm -hmm. That was when we got our own cell phone bill. Yeah, yeah. And all of our own stuff together. Like mm -hmm. I wasn't paying my own cell phone bill before we got married. I was yeah. on my mom's family plan. Yeah. And, you know, m maybe not different things. But I feel like our, com our combined, <laughs> our combined <laughs> mm -hmm. joint income, I mean, that was really what what changed things for us. And yeah. Once we actually just put all of our income into one account and then budgeted from that account mm -hmm. rather than any other way you would I try like and slice us. and dice it where, because I've seen it all. I, people come in and tell me all the time, you know, their different mm -hmm. plans and the way they run their homes and nothing ever seems to make as much sense. Uh, rather than just having one account together mm -hmm. where you put everything. And then from there, you, you, you know, can you have other accounts, yeah. And you do it, you know, yeah, and it I, all trails off. As like from a, a tree, feminist, I think it is wise to have your own source of income, bank account, like basically a, a plan B if you ever need it. But I also don't believe in like living out your life and going about your marriage with that like as a focus. Um, but I think for us, it helped us become a team in ways that we weren't a team yet because we didn't have to be like, if you knew what bills you were covering and I knew what bills I was covering, we didn't have to have conversations about anything else. Right. But then when we, there were months that we had to budget, it was hard to budget because I'm paying I my bills. yeah, I wasn't in your account, you weren't in mine. And so there was like no accountability and there was no like insight I guess into like what was going on and so it I think that helped a lot but like we do talk about money I think a lot well, we have a joint account I mean it's one thing yeah and I think also we've learned each other's weaknesses with it and like like this like it stresses me out to look at money and like deal with it so like I look at the budget I make the budget but then Zared like handles and makes sure that like we're staying on budget and keeps an eye on things and I think that helps because then my anxiety is not fueled, but it's taken care of by someone who's not doesn't get anxiety from that. And then I can come up with banker plans. And then yeah, make make decisions. Okay, so this person has been married for ten years, and they said weird tip, but before you go and speak or yell in anger towards them, eat something. I have learned anger is real, and the person I'm most likely to take it out on is my spouse. Also, when I've seen that he's mad for seemingly no reason, I've made him a sandwich, and he's totally fine. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's made our relationship and communication 100% better. <laughs> so, okay. So. If you make me a sandwich. <laughs> I will never. I will never do that. Every time I'm angry. Never. You can make your own sandwich. I think that goes beyond just eating. Like, check all of your needs. Uh, are all of your needs met? Like before you go into those conversations. And and also, like, I think that's just being self-aware. Like, are you mad because you haven't slept? Yeah, are you right. mad because it's actually, like, something you should be mad about? Or if you're me, are you mad because suddenly you're being triggered by an emotion you felt 14 years ago that you just, like, today are deciding to feel again for no reason? Like, just being self-aware, I think, is important. But you you always love talking about love languages, and I feel like that's a good window into love languages. I do love the love language. <laughs> and it was interesting, though, to think about where my emotions were coming from at certain points. Mm -hmm. And I think you were obviously instrumental in helping me uncover that because you were better at that with yourself, I feel like, than I was. Mm -hmm. And I would just a lot of times feel emotions and think that they were so locally sourced, you know, like from that exact moment I was in or whatever mm -hmm. was happening and not really take the time to understand that they might have been coming from different places or different times, you know, in the long past. Mm -hmm. So that was interesting for me to see. And then also break that down and realize, you know, why I needed to control certain things around that time. That yeah. It was unwarranted to act a certain way because of this trigger that I had that I didn't even know that I had. Mm -hmm. So that was helpful yeah. to do. Yeah. And I think love languages are good because it helps you – just learn like the tanks and the things that like if that's low, then maybe you're receiving things wrong or like maybe you're thinking you're giving love the right way, but the other person's not receiving because that's not how they re receive love. 
I don't think it's like a strict way to like go about it though. Cause I mean, I will receive love in all the love languages, but I have ones that I, I think, you know, give you more points than others. And like acts of service. Um, I always thought of that as like grand acts of service, mm -hmm. like just big gestures Yeah, and trips alone or together. Yeah. But and, it's just the day to day. Yeah. But it's I think just, it's the, the small things yeah, that the, are thoughtful versus like, it's not, okay, I'm going to do the laundry for her. It's like, no, you do the laundry because you live here and like you have yeah. laundry. It happens every day. But then maybe it's like the acts of service would be like, oh, I'm going to put her laundry away for her instead of like just mine. Like I think that's like an acts of service. But like just doing a thing that you should do as an adult living in a house isn't acts of service. Right. All right, we had to take a little intermission for kids. Hashtag parenthood. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag girl dad. Hashtag, Hashtag boy dad. I don't think that's a thing anymore. Hashtag We're getting dad. old. All right. So we have two more pieces of advice. The next one is from someone who's been married 22 years and they said, we realized a long time ago that a relationship doesn't always have to be equal, but it does always have to be fair. I mean, yeah, yeah like I don't think it's like, oh, like I don't feel like being sexual at all. And then the other person be like, okay, I'm going to go cheat on you <laughs> this month. Like, I don't think that, obviously that's not going to happen, but. I don't know that I don't. Um, do it again. What is it again? What? <laughs> no, I mean. We realized a long time ago that a relationship doesn't always have to be equal, but it does always have to be fair. Okay. Yeah, I think I need to sit down with that person and <clears> them <throat> explain that. Yeah, I'm but no, I don't. I don't think it's always going to be equal. Like I think there are times, and Michelle Obama talks about this really, really well. Shut up, whatever. But she like straight up says like I didn't like. She says that she didn't. She didn't like her husband for like ten years. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's a good doc. You meant right. And she said, <laughs> she says it's it was especially during the time when <clears throat> the girls were young. And yeah. I mean, obviously, like he's he was president, guys. He was president. So <laughs> he had a lot going on. Yeah. You know. And that's what she talks about. And yeah, and she said so. It was very unfair and unequal. But, and she talks about the 80-20 rule and how um, it's never going to be 50-50. And I think that's true. Like, there are moments where it is yeah. when we're, like, really in sync. But I think that there are, it's just, like, there are more times where, you know, like, it's not like, oh, you're going to make dinner and then I'll clean up and you can go do something by yourself for an hour. More often, it's like, you make dinner, you clean up, and then I go take a bath. <laughs> And it works yeah. for us, you know, yeah. like, I mean, you would always seem to not care. <laughs> no, I don't care. That's good. I like that. Yeah. Because we take, I, I had to get Wednesdays. Yeah, you, you do. You work out on your Wednesdays. Yeah, and Wednesday. And still, like, most of the time I will take a bath on Wednesday after you're done working out. And I think it's the, like, getting the best version of ourselves out of each other versus the most out of each other. Yeah. That was good. I like That's that. Good. They yeah, put I should submit mug. that to this. Yeah, but article. BuzzFeed, listen, <laughs> we've got some stuff for you. Okay, the last one is get married with the intention of making someone else's life better. Have children with that person because you want to care for them together and always give more than you take. Yeah, I like that one. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Write that one down. <laughs> give more than you take. <laughs> Yeah, I like that. You're pretty good at that. Yeah. I think the if it were me, young me, I wish someone would have told me about, and you hear this so many times, and I hate it, but when people talk about how fast- But he's going to tell you guys. But here we go again. He gets to do it. Now that I've done it for 10 years. <laughs> okay. But it is, it really does fly by. But more so than the time flying by, blah. Like he, he wrote some things down, and one of the things was... Time flies. Time flies, yeah. <laughs> flies time. But one of the things... It's like the last things. You know, you never know the last things that, yeah. are, that are happening. Like, you never know that. And then I think I'm more aware of it now that we have our youngest who's though getting older, and we know that some of the last things have already happened to mm -hmm. us. And I think the more that happens, the more sad that I get. And then I realize, like, all those other times in our lives when we were probably the most 
upset or frustrated were really the times that people are always telling us advice. Yeah, like we were ready for it to be <clears> over. And we were and are <laughs> ready for a lot of things to be over. Yeah. But I remember when I was in the airport at Disney World. Remember that? No, we were, I don't. We were, that was the worst travel experience we've ever had. And I remember we had the, because we had carry-ons and then we had their luggage mm-hmm. and they were the escalator and the Remember they were all, none of them knew how escalators worked, and they were falling down. Made him with this freak out, yes. like cool elf. And I'm yes, and we were going down, trying to grab the girl, and like everyone saw him just physically angry and exhausted. And these old guys were walking by, and I swear they like laughed at me, and they were like, oh. and I like I know, and they looked at me, and one of them, was, I don't remember what he said, but he was like, you'll you'll be all right. And I remember thinking like. How dare you, old man? Like, I am. Can As you, you not... walk off childless to. Yeah, and then. Yeah. But I realized, like, looking back, you know, it's, God rest his soul. He's probably not with us any longer. Oh, my God. But he, you know, he'd probably been on dozens of family vacations yeah. in my mind. Like, he had done what I was doing many times more yeah. than me with all of his buddies who'd all had kids. Like, and they all just saw, like, this young, so young. <laughs> Frustrated, oh, yeah. frustrated dad, and they were just like, probably in that moment, wanted like missed those times, mm-hmm. you know. And I'm just sitting there having the worst time I've ever had, right? Um, in a in a moment, right? Just wishing we hadn't even left the house yeah. and that we weren't even here, and all this. I just wish we were home, and you know, like just hating. It. And they're just probably thinking, I'm, I miss those days. Mm-hmm. And, like that's sad, you know. Yeah. To think about that is sad. I'll be that guy who, like, when random things happen to him, just breaks out into tears. <laughs> like, this is really intense. And it'll be, like, the smallest thing. Like, someone will say, can I have a cup? And I'll go, my children just asked me for cups and they couldn't reach them. And then just, like, cry because, you know. No, I don't think anyone's going to cry about no not one, hearing that anymore. But I bet we will one day when it's just us. And we say that. We joke about it now when the rare moments of the kids are at our house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when those kids aren't here. <laughs> and we say, oh, it's so quiet in here. That, mm-hmm. And I mean, that's like that all the time. That is really, that'll be so sad. Yeah, it will be sad. But we'll get to enjoy each other more. That's true. And we'll be able to play music again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> play music because we can't listen to music now. No, I mean. Physically yeah. play. Yeah. yeah. I'm just letting everybody else know that you didn't. We don't <laughs> not let, let our kids listen to music. Oh, no, we're not those people. No. But the last. You never know what the last will be. Thanks for hanging out with us on the Call Us Mommy podcast. If you want to spend more time with us, make sure to hit follow. And if you like the episode, share with a friend and leave a review.